So we may have ended up running out of time last year to cover this list. And while we're waiting to do our best and worst of 2016, which won't be here until like March because we want to wait to have seen pretty much everything from the Oscar season. And also foreign films. And a lot of guys. foreign films which we have to wait a long time for that were basically released in the US in 2016. Uh, here's our list of best films of 2015 because there was some... There were some fucking bangers in 2015. Absolute bangers. And this, this list is packed. It goes all the way to 15. Yeah. And it is well worth it. We were it. like, let's try to do 10. And then after that, we're like, no, there's so many films that we didn't review last year because we only really reviewed blockbusters and major releases. And there were so many other films that we saw that we missed that we didn't get to like gush about to you guys. So we thought 15 films. Let's do it. Let's talk about them. Let's do it. But first, I will just say that this is a list of our top 15. So when I say top, that's kind of somewhere between favourite and best. There's some films on this list that if we were doing a list of best films, they would be much higher because you're like, they're flawless, they're perfect, I can't fault them. But this is more if you were to ask us what we would sit down and watch like that, It's that's how we kind of ranked it. So whatever film is our number one is one if you said, if someone goes, hey, you want to watch? I'm like, boom, I'm there, I'll watch it. So outside in, inside out, here Ooh. we are. This film was an absolute dong up. It was an absolute return to form yeah. for Pixar. Uh, it was like them working at their like optimum. Like we're talking Toy Story 3 up. We're working at that level here. Like this was... Pete Doctor came in and was just like pow 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 right trust up him. in your face. Like... Tru I'd, I'd trust Pete Doctor with anything and he absolutely nailed this movie. Considering the second film from last year, The Good Dinosaur, wasn't as good. I mean, visually it was like, yes, but as a film it wasn't anywhere near like... This borderline should have been at the Oscars copping that best original screenplay. Like, yeah. it's, it's writing is so good and it's that... What Pixar's known for with its like levels with storytelling. It's got... You can please kids, but adults are sitting there like... I'm pretty sure most adults or people, are, people our age who are technically adults enjoyed this film probably more than kids did. Like, it's just... There's so much fun you can have out of this, and especially in a return venture as means well. means so, so much as well. Yeah, it just gets you on the ah, feels on every single level. This is just, just a genius. great, it's great film. Really smart. I love it. Ah, da, 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 da. Hear us out. Hear us out. We fanboyed pretty hard over this film when it first came out. We literally reviewed it at like, we went to a midnight screening, we reviewed it first thing in the morning, we were like, ah, we were like, ah, go nuts for it. And now, over a year later, it's still really, really good. Now, we're not denying that it's full of plot holes. Uh, Ray is kind of OP. There's, there's a whole bunch of issues with it, right? That could have been probably avoided quite easily. The thing, the reason why this film is here is not only because of its, of JJ's commitment to excellent visual filmmaking, John Williams' amazing soundtrack, and some pretty solid performances, regardless of what you guys think. Like, you've got young actors with a lot of weight on their shoulders that pulled this pulled this off, basically, for a lot of people. Mm. But, for us, the thing that this film nails more than anything else is conviction. There's no self-doubt at any point. It goes... I've never seen a film just go harder than this did. Yeah. And it was so committed to, to what it was. I mean, like... The storytelling beats are so like accurate, and I mean, yes, it's a re kind of a retelling of a new hope. We understand that, but as judging the film on its own merits, this is kind of a nice evolution of Star Wars, and it's the most I think I've enjoyed anything that Disney's kind of taken over. And universally as well, it's just it is loved. Obviously, there's yeah. a lot of hate out there, but the thing is like. The hate is so unnecessary because the thing is, like, objectively, this film does really succeed at what it needed, yeah. what it needed to do. And if you're going to hate on it because it's a rehash of a new hope, and that's kind of you're it's, denying it's excellent silly. cinematography, outstanding editing, outstanding editing, the best visual effects there were at the time. Yeah. Uh, excellent costume design, like on the technical facets alone, this film is absolutely like there was nothing rivaling it when it came out a year ago, and there almost isn't now. And also, you can't really start hating on it knowing, like, not what the outcomes are. And obviously, Star yeah. Wars is very different because, I mean, it is a franchise, so we know that we're going to get answers to a lot of questions in the future. So, you can't hate yeah. on someone for not giving you an answer yet when you know we, it's we, going we don't, to come. Well, well, we don't know if they're going to come. I don't think we can make those judgments until we've seen the other two. So, let's hope they turn out great. We're excited for episode 8 in the hands of Ryan Johnson. And also, just quickly again, this is something you mentioned the other day, which is just, you know, so very pivotal and vital, which I think a lot of people miss, is The Force Awakens is the first film to come out in the age of internet memes. Yes. 
shit posting yes. groups and all sorts of stuff. So the thing is, like, a I mean, lot we of love people... talking shit about Star Wars. We're in a bunch of groups on Facebook where people just talk shit. But like, uh, the thing is, like, you know, like when the first Star Wars film culture. came out, the internet didn't exist, so like people couldn't like delve Had into to talk it on to each other levels, to bag like... the Phantom Menace. This people were instantly like, ah, fuck this, and then someone else goes, ah, oh, someone said fuck this. I also think fuck this, and a lot of people like thought that straight away. But I think a lot of people that really enjoyed it have slowly bandwagoned with this one. Whereas we still see, on a cinematic level, this is great. A great landmark, a great film, and oh, just... That was about half the video we talked about that for. Yeah, what a time, though. But, I mean, it's great. Well, if you haven't seen Beast of No Nation, you need to see this film, because it's one of Netflix's first releases, uh, like, of feature film releases, and it is... Quite it's, the adventure. It's so good. For those of you guys that have seen True Detective, the first season, it was all directed by the director of this, Cary Fukunaga. And this guy is massively inspiring to me. He made this film in 30 days in the middle of the African jungle with a whole bunch of non-actors. And regardless of that kind of like context, this film is so emotionally raw and powerful. And like, it has scenes in it where I've ne that I have existed in other films before. But I've never felt, like, as kind of scarred after watching them as I did here. 100%. I mean, with something like Moonlight this year, where that's more of a story of a lifetime, like, this is No a Nations is, like, the story, like, the beginning of a lifetime, yeah. pretty much, for this character. And it's it's heartbreaking, it's heart-wrenching. And, I mean, it's all complemented by Dan Roma's score, which oh, is music. unreal. Some I mean, of my favourite ever. This guy did Beasts of the Southern Wild, and he's done quite a few other things, and he is just, he, he really knows his way around a soundtrack. The emotions and that. And, and, and that, and also we must say, Adrice Adrice Elba. Elba deserved an Oscar nomination. We at the time were like, no, we're cool with the five that got picked. But Adrice, what he had to handle making this, handling his there. character and having to like make this film and within so thirty fucked, days but with all those so, non-actors, like he's so likable. Like it's just a testament to great performance, a great film, just in general. Just it's check on it Netflix. out. If check you it out. So. Denis Villeneuve hasn't made a bad film yet. And obviously he made a rival this year, and for those of you guys that have seen our review of that film, like, oh, fuck me, how is he that good? This was what he made last year, and that too was excellent, considering it's a completely different film. Everything in this is just turned up to 11 the whole time. Uh, if anything, the number one thing that this film absolutely nails is tension. Yeah. The amount of times that we were just slowly either like like gripping our seats or inching off or like he's just a master of bringing all the visual elements together the the genius of, of the way he handled Emily Blunt's character always putting her on the back foot always putting us on the back foot with her like it's just incredible I mean this film just shows like all worlds of film collide essentially yeah. you've got Denis in the director's chair killing it you've got the actors doing a superb job with Taylor Sheridan's script oh. who did Hella High Warden he's got his new film Wind River which is premiering at Sundance it's gonna be really exciting we cannot wait and then you've got Roger Deakins on cinematography Joe with your hand your yeah. hands and doing oh. soundtracks so you've just got all these worlds Worlds of like these master filmmakers coming together and it just works. Yeah, it really does work and, and this film is just amazing These are the guys doing Blade Runner 2049 So until given outright reason to not think Bla the new Blade Runner is gonna be great Be excited be excited Now we all know how much of a masterpiece the room is So here we are with room and of course it's gonna be very good. Yeah, I mean uh uh, Can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Hi, doggy. It's kind of hard to really appreciate how good this movie is. And I mean, not only emotionally, but like thematically and the kind of content it handles in such a unique way, like playing it all from a five-year-old's perspective and Jacob Tremblay as a performer of such a young age handling it as well as he did, like outright one of the best performances of last year, uh, is just incredible. Like this movie is really it's something special. fantastic, yeah. I mean, it's kind of crazy like how natural this film is and considering oh, the yeah. director went from doing Frank, which is such a whack little indie Weird. film, which we just kind of feel so strange about. But I mean, go from that to something so human and raw and unsettling, but also yeah. 
very settling whilst and watching beautiful it. beautiful at the same time, yeah. but being super fucked up. Like, I just... To see the beauty in such, pu like, pure evil and darkness is, it's it's really, really nice. And, like, I mean, there's some incredible moments in and this film. And obviously Brie Larson's performance is amazing. But, yes, there's a, there's a sequence around about the centre of the film that if you've seen it, you know what we're talking about. The that, soundtrack kicks into gear. And it's just, it's honestly one of the most profound scenes I have ever seen in my life. And props to everyone working there, particularly Jacob Tremblay for handling it the way he did. Because that's one of those ultimate movie moments for us, I think. Like, it's one of those moments that we couldn't watch outside of the context I of I think, the film. yeah, both, I mean, and the director, like, yeah. here as well, to be able to get Tremblay to do that on yeah. screen. And, like, it just, everything works. If, if, if you have not seen this film... We highly recommend it because it is just, it's well worth the trip. It's emotional, it's beautiful, it's amazing. Now, if you haven't seen Anomalisa, you need to see this film. We walked out of it and we were like, my goodness, one of the most human films of this year. And it's not even got people in it. It's, it's animated. It's a cast of three people. It's just, honestly, this film is so spectacular and like, I mean, I delved into it a bit more afterwards and I really read up on a lot and I looked into a lot of behind the scenes and I really, I watched the film like and broke it down a fair bit and Kaufman's brilliance just comes out to play here. It's... This, this guy is one of the film, greatest writer-directors ever. This film is so goddamn articulated, and to think it went through hell, like, mm. to get made as well. I mean, obviously it's stop animated as well, so, like, it, it is a hard film, and it took them over three years to get made on a very minuscule budget. Every single frame is worth it, and every single frame is perfect. It just all comes together here. Like, obviously, Kaufman at the helm with another director he worked with here, the and then voice Carter acting. Burwell, the, the, the voice yeah, the acting. Score. Um, it's one of the most excitingly directed films, considering it's all with basically stop-motion miniatures, stop-motion sets. It, it really is just a profoundly affecting human film of what it is to be human, why we're here on this earth, and it handles it all in about 90 minutes, doesn't it? Yeah, it can just bust through it all like and that. And considering, I mean, the concept and everything else about it, it's actually quite boring at face value when you delve into this film, it's it's got so much there to look and at. Yeah, and it's, it's like it'll just leave you thinking at the end of it, like, it's just, like, potent stuff. Yeah. Woo! So we'd heard great things about this movie, it had great reviews, it was the last movie of the 2015 uh, like Oscar season that we saw. Basically it's about uh, on the eve of a couple's 45th wedding anniversary, some new kind of information like resurfaces and kind of starts to strain their relationship. It's really laid back type of stuff. But at the same time the intensity of this movie is just like the ache you know when you watch a movie and just you, your heart just feels like it's about to drop out? This is that movie. Yeah, it's kind of crazy, Hayne. I mean, like, the director's only 40 years old, and for him to, to pull up a film like this, and to understand, like, humans the at years. their age as well, is just amazing. And Charlotte Rampling gives oh. the performance of her life here. Like, I'm not even saying that like that. That's literally the words that came out of her mouth. She reckons she there's no way she'd be able to do a performance like this without her own life experience. And it shows, because it all comes off on screen. And it's not just her. The entire supporting cast, her husband, everyone at yeah. play here, it just really brings their A game and you just feel it. It's just so well directed. I mean, every moment it's closing people off in different rooms or separating them or having characters watch something but you don't see what they're watching. Instead, you're just focusing on the ache on their faces. It taught us a lot about directing mm. in, the, in the way of reserving cuts. In a way, I haven't seen a lot of modern films do where someone's talking about something and you're like, I'm sure this is pissing the other person off. Show me their reaction. But it's just focusing on the person's talking face person who's talking's face and then it cuts to them and you see that they're either livid or they're and it's just amazing stuff just a really really, really masterful film. and I one mean, of those endings that just it's a coffin putter yeah it's so good it's like, like oh just my god it's an gonna emotional end don't end and then it does and you're like ah yeah oh wow youth <laughs> was absolutely remarkable. Now, we didn't review this film, but I tell you right now, this film put us in an absolute coffin. Yeah. Essentially, it, the film follows Michael Caine's character, who is a composer. Oh, and he used to be a composer, he's retired Used to be now. a composer, yeah, and he's living out, he's sort of, well, he's on holiday in like a retirement type in village In like the Alps or something, with a whole bunch of other people from all over the world. His best friend, Harvey Keitel, is a director. Uh, Paul Dano Paul Dano's an actor. actor. There's a, he's there with his daughter, who's played by Rachel Wise. It's just a, like a kind of community 
community based film but we follow all these different characters journeys and a lot of people will find this film pretentious but I think we kind of keyed into what the director was after here and every time I've rewatched this film it oh. just it's honestly like getting like punched in the face like uh there is so much to get out of this film. Like, it's so it, rich. It really does come down to the story that they tell here. And I mean, uh, like quite similar to Kenneth Lonegan with Manchester by the Sea, who created such an uh, original story. This, again, is such an original story. Yeah. It's so great to see because there's so much you can get out, out of fact, every viewing. The fact that there's so many characters and yet as the film begins to wind up towards the end, the payoffs for the journeys we've taken with yeah. every single person we see. Like, I don't think there's a single... Even the characters that pop up for like one shot end up getting tied off at some point in the end in the film and I think that there's something just really masterful about the way it's handled but there's certain scenes that emotionally in this movie are just like oh man I almost want to break down and cry just thinking about it now because they're so powerful like everyone in this movie is just it's it's absolutely unbelievable. I mean, this film works in a very human level, but also in a very absurd and whack level yeah, as it's well. Strange, so but it's, it's one of those indies that you're gonna and... watch and you're gonna be like, man, this is whack, but I'm really really enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, I think so... it's a difficult movie not to enjoy because it's so intimate and personal, and I think it's really important at the end of the day. Now, if you're a regular on our channel, you know that we absolutely love this film. Pretty much don't think we make a video without talking about it. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, we absolutely love Justin Kurtzell's work, whether it be Snowtown, Macbeth, even like his, what he did in Assassin's Creed. Like, Justin Kurtzell... Some of it's okay. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a very, very, very talented guy. And him partnering here with Adam R. Kapoor, it just, everything comes, everything comes to work. It's the best looking film... Probably ever! Yeah. <laughs> I, this I'm, film is just stunning. It's, it honestly, like, there's something just about, it's so poetic, and like, obviously it's Shakespeare, it's based on the Shakespeare play, we naturally love that play, we've made our own film about that play, so there's a lot of our own froth here, but I think this, this is one of those movies that I watched and I was like, I, I don't think anything here wasn't nailed. Everything, every, every single world comes together, you know, yeah. whether it be the actors, whether it be the soundtrack, direction, cinematography, editing, everything just comes into line and you're like, wow. Everything turned right up to the max here and it so, all, yeah. it's excellent. <laughs> again, this is another one where you need to hear us out. This is one of those films, again, where, like, it's not necessarily going to be great for everyone. I wouldn't say it's outright a great film, but for us, we love this movie. Like, the experience we had watching this, like, this is the first Malik film we'd ever watched. We'd sort of seen the trailer ages ago, it's one of our favourite trailers ever, and we were like, I, I, we needed to see this. And then we watched it, there was some weird, unique experience where I've never been so kind of relaxed and so involved in a movie, like I was completely invested in it, I always wanted to see where it wanted to go next. Exactly, I mean like if you enjoy Malik you'll understand where we're coming from because once you tap into his intent and when you can try to like, you try to see where he's going with things, you can just keep on getting so much out of a return viewing. Mm. If you don't like Malik, I really do just stress, try to relax and watch this film, and try enjoy, to chill yeah. out and see what he is actually creating, because he's not creating pretentious art. He's, he's not, not creating, creating something that he's Look at not wanting people, you to understand. We're not understand. seeing it. We're not yeah, seeing the and pretension. He, and he's not creating something that he doesn't want audiences to understand. It's Otherwise, he wouldn't be a filmmaker. Yeah, it's an experiment. And I it think. just works. Hey, I mean, this film is just gorgeous. Like, the it, soundtrack. It's pretty much all improvised as well, and the acting across the board is really fantastic. Like, everyone in this movie, and I, I will just say, like, again, this movie is just... Gorgeous like it really is it was a massive inspiration for us as filmmakers to go and try out some of this freewheeling type style I just I just adore this movie the thing is if you look at all his films and you see how talented his cast are that he gets There's a reason for it because actors froth working with him. Well, I'd love to work with him man. So maybe check out his films yeah. and see why actors love doing it Well this film is just Unreal. I um, mean, just it will take your breath away. We heard, we first heard the concept, and we were like, "Oh my god!" Essentially, it's about a Hungarian who's working in a concentration camp in yeah. the states. One of the people as his own son. He doesn't mistake, but that's part of the conceit of the film. Is exactly. That we don't know exactly what's going on there. You find someone who is like, "This is my son. I need to bury him." And I don't even know if that's his son or not, because uh, just it's just fucked up. But it's so good. Like, basically, the idea that the director had was that he decided to film in 4x3, which is a small, basically almost square aspect ratio. And by doing that and filming entirely in close-up, the background is always blurred, so we're always locked on the actor's face. 
The actor handles this with amazing skill, considering he hasn't really acted before. He's not an actor, he's a poet. Like... It's all long takes, and basically, like, it's just a sense of being there, and it's... I've never been more stressed watching a movie than this. Like, it's just a unique experience. It's a kind of World War II film we haven't seen before. And you I... just get lost in it. I mean, it's just... It's it's a terrifying experience, and it it's really shows... Scary. It shows exactly what concentration camps were like in that time, and that it, that's just haunting. It pretty much so... becomes a documentary. Yeah. And yet it's at the same time a completely wonderful piece of art and it's a complete must see. So Creed is a really, really interesting one for us because for me, I remember watching the trailer and going, nah, and then when I saw it, from that first shot when it starts up against the wall and the camera moves off into that tracking shot, I was like, what the fuck was I thinking? Because Creed was fucking phenomenal. This film is absolutely fantastic. Kugler is just a modern maestro. I mean, like, between this... That is how you do a reboot and sequel. This and Fruitvale Station, there is very a lot of reason to be excited for Black Panther, his upcoming next film. He's doing a Marvel film, and that, for me to be excited for a superhero, like, a superhero film like I am for Black Panther is a testament to just how good this guy is as a director. Mike B. Jordan's performance is phenomenal. Where just was his awards attention? Tessa Thompson is absolutely insane. Tessa Thompson, insane. where did she come from? Considering this film is kind of like a blockbuster, it's also so incredibly natural and it's like an indie yeah, as well. Yeah, it's so artful. And it's obviously so realistic. Stallone is just unbelievable. Here is his performance back again as Rocky. So uh, I just, if you have not seen this yeah. film, please check it out because it is just so well made. And it, yeah, it just some of the stuff that is done in this film and again, some of the realism, it's like, did you let the actors improvise then? Is that how good your script was? Is that... I just... It's something really special about the fact that this film even exists. Mm -hmm. I See it, please. Well, we reviewed this film twice on our channel, and for good reason, because Mad Max Fury Road Keeps is... Keeps getting better! Yeah! <laughs> This film is just a, uh, a a banger. A banger. A big banger. And the more you read into it, the more research you do into it, the more you try to appreciate just how fucking outstanding George Miller's direction is of this movie. It just continues opening up. Like, when people talk about big dumb fun, this is it. This Except is it's it. not dumb. No. On the surface level it's dumb, but you do even the slightest bit of scratching under the surface and this film is so rich with ideas like yes there's a lot going on with feminism and like empowerment and all that stuff but it's such a rich film in terms of just the little things that this movie makes so clear considering they didn't even have a script but like action has never been done this well, it's fuck all of its CGI, it's pretty much all real all the performances are really really like well done uh, it's just a cinematic landmark for yeah. so many films now. Like, I mean, for, for, like action films to come after this, it's kind of like what happened with Born Ultimatum. It's kind of like, well, that's Born not, Ultimatum that... was like here, and then what do you do? Yeah, exactly. It's now like, they what else can you they do? They couldn't hit it with the next one. So, so exactly. I don't think we're ever going to see a film just as good as this when it comes to action films. Because, just, my goodness. There's never been anything like this, and it's just, it really is just one of the greatest films ever, I think. If there's one film last year that we're kind of regretting that we never reviewed, it's this one because I just, I can't even understand how it can be as good as it is. Like, this is one of those movies that is just flawless. Its precision is unmatched. Sorry, but like there is no case to argue against this film not yeah. being a masterpiece. It, like Todd Haynes has executed, articulated, and just struck he had gold it in here. here. He had it in here, and that's how it's come out. Directly like that, from the first shot, from when that score rises up. But basically, this is a uh, a lesbian like uh, romance. It's something that that, that that is quite kind of taboo, especially for the 50s. And for this movie to be as resoundingly like I don't know, like, universal and intimate at the same time. It's just insane. It like, just it just clicks into gear. I mean, like, they everything in this film is just done... So fucking beautiful! So well. I mean, I yeah, like, just... it's obviously stunning. The soundtrack is incredible. The performances are just immaculate. Rooney Mara somehow captures his character so well to somehow... Compensate whatever the hell like Kate Blanchett has pulled off. Kate here Blanchett is this is a fucking landmark work. Like, this is just a powerhouse performance with presence that is like unmatched. From the on first screen. scene, you're like, I'm also in love with you instantly. <laughs> like you are so very good at what you do. You are one of the greats. Again, for two white 
straight Australian guys that are our age to get just how amazing this film is with subject matter that is so distant from, from anything we personally understand uh, is a testament to just how fucking good this is. Like, yeah. This is just one of the best movies of the century so far. It's sure. absolutely magnificent. Sure. It's just going to grow on us over time and please, please check it out because this film is it's a just masterpiece. masterful. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So here we are. It's taken a long time to get here actually because we had to gush about all those films because we didn't review them. Yep. But we're at number one. Uh, a lot of you will probably know what this film is going to be. So let's just dive straight into it. The Revenant gets us very, very excited. Very I mean, revved Oh up. my goodness! Wow, this film. When we first saw it, we were kind of we went into denial almost. Like we, we saw it like it. two months before it was released. Yeah, and then we we're just like, oh my god, have we even seen did, this did film? We even see it? Like, because when we rewatched it, it was like, it's just such a resoundingly powerful experience. And regardless of what you think about uh, the the lack of story or its pretentiousness, as a force of cinema like quite often we talk about cinema as as entertainment and as uh, something for profit and as this film is such a force of nature like weirdly enough considering it's all filmed naturally with natural light it's all filmed out in the wilderness no sets or nothing uh, it's such a resoundingly powerful film like over the two hours 40 minutes or whatever it runs for it is just it doesn't feel that long. Ah! I mean, like, this is like an art house blockbuster. The film made over $500 million. Because of the genius casting of DiCaprio. You put DiCaprio on, it gets people in through the exactly. door. Exactly, and for whatever reason, it feels as though all us indie fans, all of a sudden, as soon as a film like this does big numbers, we go, oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. Ah, I mean, fuck it. We it's find actually... a reason to hate it, but it's like, no, guys, when indie art house films like this do that well, then there is reason to be excited. Obviously, yes, the budget got blown out of proportion yeah. because of, you know, et cetera and so forth. But the thing is, this is so encouraging. When films like this do that well, it means other films similar to this will get made by smaller and, directors. And like, I think, I, I don't think anyone can ever replicate exactly what this film has done. No. But on every level, this really works. And, and much the same as Mad Max, it's got all these little moments, these little reincorporations that actually give it, it's a whole lot more... Uh, depth and I think people actually realize I think a lot of people could act like it skims over the surface of stuff but it didn't even need a touch on a lot of topics to begin with the fact that in your goes no we want to cover this we want to explore this it, the film just wants to be a force of nature and that's what it is I mean everything is so good in this and movie. every single shot means something and is there for a reason I know like a lot of people mean be like oh you know like they use a long take here for you know this reason or that or like but it's like no there it, he's subconsciously telling it's you something not one the entire it's, time. it's filmmaking at like maximum level it's like this is like ultimate filmmaking it, it, as much as i want to as much as i don't want to say like it's just people trying to you know one up each other and look well i made this film that was super hardcore because i think a lot of people just miss in your was doing that i think this movie is just truly wonderful and i never use the word because i hate i hate using the word but it's epic it mm. actually is like oh, it if, is. if someone's going to throw around that word throw it this way because that's what it is I, I really is, and I mean, Tom Hardy, of course, uh, obviously DiCaprio, fantastic in this, Will Poulter, Domino Gleeson, everyone's excellent, uh, it's one of the best looking films ever made, and I know I'm still going to love it exactly the same amount that I love it now, because uh, this is our number one film of 2015, and my fucking god, I love it. Absolutely. So thank you for bearing with us as we gushed about our favourite 15 films of 2015. There was so much to talk about, so many films that we wish we'd re reviewed for you at the time so you could have seen them in cinemas. Uh, yeah, anyway, that is our list of our top 15 films of 2015. An absolutely banging list. I mean, there's so many bangers on here, but please let us know what your favourite bangers are of 2015. <laughs> Not talking about songs, definitely talking about films. Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're down, that's probably worth hitting our subscribe button so you can see our list for 2016 and also our worst films of 2015, which will be up very soon. Oh golly. Anyway, also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat and Twitter, all at Breaking Banner.